Hi, in this video, we're going to be creating a ChatGPT clone in Python. We're going to be using the OpenAI API to do this. An API is basically something that allows two different applications to interact, and the full form of an API is an application programming interface. So I'm going to be explaining everything step by step, and yeah, it's a pretty easy program, but you can use it to help yourself in homework or any office work or anything that you want to find out. It uses natural language processing, and it's completely like ChatGPT. And yeah, let's get started. So before we get started, I want to give you guys a fun fact that this program was actually written by ChatGPT itself. That's how awesome it is. You can also use this to do a bunch of things, uh, such as writing these programs. So anyways, let's get started. I'm going to explain the code uh, after we install the prerequisites. So let's start off with the most basic one, OpenAI module. Open up your terminal command prompt or Windows PowerShell and type in pip install OpenAI. Hit enter and it's going to install it for you. I already have it installed. If that doesn't work, then just type in pip3 install OpenAI. The difference is pip3 specifies that we're using Python 3. Now it's going to say requirement already satisfied because I already have it installed. Now, um, I'm going to explain this code in just a sec, but before we do that, I want to show you guys a little bit of documentation. So I'm going to head over to Chrome and let's go over to the introduction. So I'm going to leave all these links in the description if you want to study more, but let's just go to this prompts. So how you program the model and NLP. NLP stands for Natural Language Processing, which is what we use in ChatGPT. So as you can see, this is the prompt that we're generating right here. Um, in order to generate an API key, you just have to go to this link, create a open AI account, which is completely safe, and create a new secret key and copy it. Now in the source code, you just want to change this, whatever I have here, and paste in your own API key. Just a disclaimer, all the API keys will be deleted that you see in this video, so yeah. Anyways, so just specify your API key. Now this is the most important thing, everything else is pretty easy, just make sure you put in the right API key. So for those of you who are just here for the program, uh, just paste this into the source code area and yeah, your program will work. Just run it and it'll start working. But for those of you programmers who want to understand the code, I'll just explain it really quickly. So set your open AI API key as an environment variable. So we just environment and then open AI API key. We specify it as the API key, which we imported um, from OpenAI. Then initialize OpenAI API client. What this means is we're basically just recognizing it in this file as the API key that's right over here. <clears throat> OpenAI.API key is equal to, and then we just specify this right over here again. Now, this is really important. This is a function to generate an answer from GPT-3. So let's say I ask a question. What is, who, or who is Elon Musk? And how does it answer? Well, it uses the DaVinci engine. Now, there are a bunch of engines used in OpenAI, but like DaVinci Codex, and there are a lot of ones, uh, a lot of engines, but we're gonna be using DaVinci. It's the most used and the most basic. So response is, we're just specifying, we're gonna be using the response um, down here. But anyways, so prompt, this is just boilerplate content. Max tokens is the amount of characters that it's going to be using. I'll get to this a little bit later when you find an inefficiency in the program. This is just boilerplate stuff. Then we specify the answer as the response, like I said, right over here. Return the answer. So now we have the answer, but how do we return it to the user? So we're just going to add a loop over here. This is the main program. So the, qu the question that uh, the computer is going to ask is, what is your question? And then we write our question. And it's going to generate the answer from GPT-3, like right over here. And we use the response and we specify the response as answer. And then we're just writing the answer here. A print statement, everybody's familiar with that. We just use it, the answer, and then it types in the answer. So let me give you guys a demo. We're going to run the program and it's going to say, what is your question? So my question is, who is Elon Musk? Now it's going to take a little time because GPT is, first of all, it's accessing the API, then moving over um, into this file, then we're using OpenAI API keys, generating a bunch of things. So it's going to take uh, around 30 seconds, but it's still nonetheless a really useful program. Now your question might be, why don't I just type this into Google? And the reason is, you can actually conversate with this as a human being. So like, who is Elon Musk? Uh, you can gain descriptions. Now this is a very basic program, but you can use this to write code. You can use this to do a lot of things. So. Uh, right over here. Elon Musk is a South African born American entrepreneur and businessman who currently serves as the CEO and CTO of SpaceX, Tesla, SolarCity, uh, Hyperloop, all of the facts that we know about uh, Elon Musk. Now, like I said, this is a beta program. So as you can see, this is an incorrect fact right over here. 
And the reason for that is it's outdated. It's using a bunch of different databases that are not correct. So that's why I wouldn't recommend you rely on this for completely, like as you can see, it's giving us old data, for example, 2017 net worth. But my point is that we can actually use this to gain data. We can extract data from ChatGPT. Now, what I wanna encourage you all to do is take this even further. This is just a really simple program showing you how you can take data from ChatGPT and put print it in your terminal. I want you guys to automate things with this. I want you guys to create new programs that we can actually use and expand. For example, a friend of mine created an automation program which basically automates all of his homework. It, just like we've done here, it generates a bunch of data from ChatGPT and it lists it in a homework, um, in a homework format. So you can do a lot of things with this. This is just to, uh, to get you guys started with ChatGPT. You're getting information from ChatGPT. So let's just try one more thing. What is uh, a square? You know what? What is a what is friction? All right, let's try this. But once again, we're gonna have to wait 15 to 20 seconds, but it's gonna, probably gonna give us a correct answer or somewhat correct answer. And uh, this is not hard coded, so that's the cool thing. It's an actual artificial intelligence. You know, instead of using Neuralink and all of these different uh, machine learning technologies, you can actually start using ChatGPT directly, which is why this program is so useful. So I know it's slow, but it's still worth it. So let's just be patient and wait for the answer. Right, so. Now the reason it keeps on repeating the last statement, like I told you earlier, is because the max characters is 1024 and it has to complete that. But until then, it does give us, uh, so it's repeated all of this. So the force that resists the relative motion of two surfaces in contact with each other is friction. What is the coefficient of friction? What is the coefficient of static friction? What is the coefficient of kinetic friction? And then it just keeps on repeating that. So the answer is technically just um, until here, until here, this point but it's going to keep on repeating that because we have the max tokens is 1024. If we took that lower, it won't keep on repeating that. So it's really fun to experiment with. This is just to get you guys started with ChatGPT. I hope you guys enjoyed. The source code will be available in the description. Peace.